Breaking news, the FBI has seized $3.6 billion in stolen cryptocurrencies from hackers and rappers. I'm Coffee Zilla. This is the $10 million studio. Welcome back. Now, two people have been arrested so far in connection with these stolen funds, Ilya Lichtenstein and Heather Morgan. Now, this $3.6 billion comes from a 2016 hack that targeted Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange. You might remember them from our Tether saga. Notably, Ilya and Heather are not accused of hacking Bitfinex itself, but rather laundering the money afterwards. They are both charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering and conspiracy to defraud the United States, which together carry a maximum sentence of 25 years in prison. Now, we're going to get into all the specifics of how these two were able to do this, but it's worth noting that I don't think these charges are near enough. The girl, especially Heather Morgan, should be incarcerated for at least another 25 years purely on the basis of being unbearably cringe. So look, here's the thing. As I said, the FBI seized it from hackers and rappers. Yes, this lady, Heather, is um, a rapper. She calls herself the Crocodile of Wall Street. She's obsessed with alligators and um, she raps terribly. I mean, she's a rapper sort of in the same way that American Idol singers are singers. Now, I know what you're thinking. We might have just uncovered the real crime here, and it's true. But honestly, hear her out. She's she's a lot of things. She's not just a rapper. Uh, look, I'll let her tell it. I'm many things. A rapper, an economist, a journalist, a writer, a CEO, and a dirty, 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 dirty hoe. Horrible rapper. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is who stole all this money. <laughs> billions. Billions of dollars laundered. It, this is who it is. Uh, it's unbelievable. And you know what? The only honest thing might be that she's a writer. See, I looked into this and it turns out that that's actually true. Uh, Heather Morgan turns out to be a Forbes contributor. They just let anyone in these days. And one of her articles was this. Experts share tips to protect your business from cyber criminals. You know what? I think she actually might know what she's talking about. You see guys, you just have to learn to protect your business from criminals by criminals. Another thing that she raps about uh, as as a professional rapper that she is, is um the is the cove the cove the social distancing guys. She's she's out there helping people out, um, scaring them away from her. I think. Woo! Got coronavirus. Woo! Woo! Do your part. Social distance. Do your part. Social distance. Do your part. Social distance. Stay six feet apart. You know what? <laughs> If I saw someone dancing like that, I would social distance from them permanently. And the song, who's got coronavirus? Who, who? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> it's so bad that it might be good. What is? What would Fantano give it? I feel like Fantano would give this a, a 10. All right, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rapper career, we had to discuss that. But <laughs> listen, let's get back to uh, the... The, the case, sorry, Stephen, come on, the case. Um, the FBI broke it down like this with this chart. Basically how this worked was after hacking funds, these two laundered the money through a series of cryptocurrency accounts, including cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance. They would then send that money to a series of made up identities. Now bear in mind, this wasn't that sophisticated because they kept using new email addresses, but using the same photo. So these two feel like amateurs, but at the same time, they were using thousands of transactions to try to hide these movements. So in some ways they weren't, they knew what they were doing. And this whole case is kind of like that. It's like a little bit sophisticated, but then also extremely amateurish. These two aren't exactly genius criminals if uh, the rap songs were any indication. But this report also hinted about the fact that this also might be the work of another person too. According to the affidavit, the information contained, quote, includes information provided by private entities that the US government believes to be reliable, AKA probably a whistleblower, maybe a friend of these two. Um, and it would make sense why they were motivated to do that because according to the affidavit, Bitfinex offered up to 5% of any property recovered. The total potential reward 
exceeds $400 million. So it just might be the case that someone out there, a friend perhaps of the crocodile of Wall Street, might be crying crocodile tears when these two go to jail, thinking that maybe they can get some of that reward money. But no matter who it was, I'm just glad these two got caught, and I hope the judge considers an extra sentence for all the emotional damage this story inflicted on all of us who are now being subjected to these two's work. That's it. See ya. Do your